Now with this ongoing situation you might be missing the outside world, or your favourite leisure activity. Well if that leisure activity was golf, then fear ye not, because PC Golf for IBM PC Compatibles is here. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, more on that later. If you don't like golf, then trust me, it's irrelevant. We all know this thing is going to be an undeniable piece of crud, but let's take a look anyway. Created by Sports Sciences Incorporated in 1994, a little company operating out of Twinsburg, Ohio, here we have the ultimate option for personal computers. The only computer golf game with swing. <laughs> We're going to need a 386 to run it, but other than that, it's fun at any level of skill. Oh god, this is going to be disastrous, isn't it? Originally retailing for $149, this isn't a cheap piece of kit, and indeed Sports Sciences Incorporated created a range of pro sports equipment, including a baseball version called Batter Up. Inside we've got our golf club with quite a realistic handle, but apparently it's a 26 inch length of steel, or it will be later, and it's got a huge lob of plastic on the end. There's an obligatory manual filled with joy and the odd instruction, a plastic box which you can only presume goes on the ground, making up half of this realistic pack of action. Here's the 9 pin serial cable, which connects it to your computer of choice. No 9 volt power adapter though, you have to supply that yourself, which is a bit odd for the 90s. Here's a 3.5 inch floppy labelled Country Club Golf Game Pro Version, like there's some kind of amateur edition doing the rounds, I'm sure. We also get a separate manual for the game and we get a little leaflet, showing us all the accessories we could get. I mean, really? <laughs> all of this? A really? carry case? The Pro Swing system apparently fully analyses your swing, and is indeed compatible with the included software. In fact, it was originally sold as an aid in golf shops, before sports sciences realised they needed to branch out into entertainment. So that's why we're stuck with the regular old PC Golf version. The console version, TV Golf, was available for the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive, and featured interchangeable cartridges so you could use various games, such as PGA European Tour, or PGA Tour Golf, or PGA Tour 2, yeah you get the idea. Congratulations, you are the proud owner of one of the finest computer golf gaming accessories available today. The club has a telescopic shaft for packaging purposes. How to install battery, oh god it needs batteries! Alright, I guess we'd better slip off this protective foam on the club and install the batteries. And I should note, it's definitely not the easiest compartment to get into. It, what, what the hell? This is absolute, absolute bullshit. It's got batteries in it. Ah, 25 year old batteries, which expired in 1999. Nice. Still, we will give them a go. They are Energizer Industrial, after all. Yeah, that compartment is very difficult. We'll leave it off for the time being. Extendo! Is, was that it? Well, that's how far it extends. Well, okay, let's, let's do some golf. It's in the deep stuff. Oh, what? I not realize I was that deep in the undergrowth. 65, okay. Oh shit, that was a mistake. Now, the reason I'm playing Lynx 386 on my trusty Compact Pro Linear 
is because this whole golf package really pivots around it. You need a copy of Lynx 386 to use the club. In fact, the country club golf game we spied earlier is really just a mod for Lynx 386, which adds interactive golf club functionality to proceedings. Now, this is a curious thing because on its own, Lynx 386 is actually a really good golf game. Oh my god! I used to while away the hours plodding from course to course, awestruck by the realistic immersion it offered, and I'm not joking. No, my. <laughs> oh my god! So, surely this golf club is just going to add to that immersion, isn't it? What, what was that? It moved about three bloody centimeters! What? How are you supposed to play golf in these conditions? Okay, now feels like a good point to talk about Squarespace. Now, before coming a pro golfer, I actually built and designed websites for a living, and it can be an arduous and expensive process. Thankfully, Squarespace allows you to create your own web presence easily, quickly, and most importantly, aesthetically. Just look how easy it is to set up a gorgeous site. It even takes care of search engine optimization. I knocked together a site in minutes. You'll find it in the description. You'll also find a link to squarespace.com slash nostalgia nerd for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Nice. Now, about this golf malarkey. A two foot putt counts the same as a two foot drive. Jesus Christ. The first issue is that the software didn't seem to work with Lynx 386 CD. We just get a blank screen. That's fair enough. The CD version didn't come out until 1995, and this was released in 1994. But good god, that's some unfortunate timing. There must have been literally, what, tens of people unable to get their interactive golf club to work with their CD-ROM version of Lynx 386? Oh, those poor bastards. Actually, it appears the company was making some pretty good revenues on this equipment, which is impressive, to say the least. Anyway, it's 2020, so I can just download the floppy disk version of Lynx and install it on the Compact's hard drive. Installing Country Club on top is straightforward. You only really have to specify which COM port you're plugging the sensor into, and you're away. Okay, so, now we should be able to use it with the club, so... Way, well, hey, things seem to be running smoothly now. I guess we'll just have to do without the voice of Bobcat Goldthwaite, as my caddy has found on the CD version. A two-foot putt counts the same as a two-foot drive! So, luckily, those 25-year-old batteries are still working. Fine which is a testament to the Energizer industrial label, that's for sure. But then again, we only need to power this red LED on the bottom. All I then need to do is position the monitor in a suitable place, start the game and swing the club over the sensor, hopefully to get some lovely ball action. What? Great shot. Yes! In it goes. It's quite satisfying when it works. And that's because most of the time it doesn't work well at all. What? Are you, what? What? Look at. Look at that! Well, come on! Allow me to quote the instruction manual. What are you still moving for? When you play golf, the distance the ball travels and the direction the ball takes depends upon the swing and the position of the club face at impact. So, if you take a weak swing, the ball will not go very far. What, what was that? It moved about three bloody centimetres! 
Likewise, if your swing angle is inside out or outside in, or your club face angle is open or closed, your ball will slice or hook. Come on. Come on! Oh, at least it got over the path this time. Oh, it's in the deep stuff. I know, thank you, mate. The same things affect your game when you use PC Golf. So the sensor is supposed to detect when you hook or slice the ball, but it's hard to determine if it actually does. There's a row of more hidden sensors at the top of the device which detect where the golf club veers to, but power is really the make or break factor here, and despite how hard you hit it, the main problem seems to be the pathetic amount of travel in the ball. Oh, now it goes too far! Yeah, until you get near the green, and then a slight hit will send the ball flying. Now, I acknowledge that I'm a little scared to go all out in this space, so I'm swinging the club like a cat in the cloakroom. I mean, you really need a lot of area to use this, despite the somewhat small 26 inch golf club. Clearly, it's not designed for your average UK house or office, but we do get a nice Wii style strap to put the club around our wrists, so that you don't launch it into your brother's face on the third hole for example. The manual also suggests using an actual golf glove and wearing, I quote, rubber soled athletic shoes for improved traction when using your PC golf. So at least I've got that down. <laughs> Left hand users need not worry because the direction of the light can be switched, allowing the club to face correctly whatever your position, although it also means you can smack the ball with the back of your virtual club if you want, but it makes absolutely no difference to the outcome. So much for this mimicking the actions of a real club. A nice touch is you can get the software to automatically move to your next shot without clicking continue and then the software will kind of aim in the right direction, but this takes 5 seconds and it gets mighty tedious. What? And then when you naturally have to use the mouse to reposition yourself, rotate, choose clubs or other functions, it's a pain in the ass to go over to the computer, make the choice, walk back. Although there are some sensors at the side which can awkwardly change the club for you if you hover over them for long enough, but they're not great. No, oh, come on! This is really ruining a nice game of sit down golf. It's actually easier if you have the monitor on the floor though, you get a better feeling of being in the game, but then you're just terrified of smashing your CRT, or I am anyway, I mean CRTs mean a lot to me, or tripping over the massive cables you now have lying around. Be the club! Ooh, nice shot. Yeah! Occasionally I pulled off some nice shots, but never as nice as if I was using a mouse and keyboard. Mark Twain might have said, golf is a nice walk spoiled, well interactive PC golf is a nice bloody game of golf spoiled, it absolutely ruins it in my view. I'm not gonna lie, at moments it was nice, it was fun even, but that was more the satisfaction of actually pulling off a decent shot after hours of attempts. Oh yes! Yes! Come on! But there have been some decent golf simulators, even some from the same era, maybe we'll get to them another time. So what happened to Sports Sciences Inc? Well despite the mid 90s being the peak time for interactive golfing accessories, it wasn't meant to be. 
Look, here's Stuart Sheffay on The Computer Chronicles getting a demonstration with seemingly the only other game compatible with PC Golf, Picture Perfect Golf by Empire Interactive Entertainment. Show me how, you, how to use it. Very good. What we do, essentially, with the infrared device is this has a club head at the bottom of it that's infrared, and it passes through two series of sensors. That's how we get club head speed. Nice shot, right down the middle, Randy, okay. Clearly this guy is better than me. Sports Sciences tried to make deals with Accolade, Brilliant Interactive and Mindflux for future golf game compatibility, but it seemingly wasn't to be. Despite this media coverage, their golf and baseball interactive lines vanished from retail stores in 1995, and they began to sell by mail order only, a familiar story. They merged into Smart Games Interactive Inc. in 1996, the same year they were working on an interactive skateboard simulator for the PlayStation, which would have been pretty cool. Unfortunately, this is also the year they had a court case for unpaid packaging manufacture costs, at the same time as requiring a financial boost to their research and development operations. It would seem this part of the company fizzled out shortly after. And that marks the end of this glorious range of accessories and training aids. Personally, for now, I'm going back to sitting down and clicking my way through these courses. It's the best way to get out and about, in my opinion, because PC Golf has ruined my expectations of virtual golf for the time being. I mean, golf was never great to start with, but I don't want it to ruin my feelings towards Lynx 386. Here, it's a case of the mouse way is the best way on the fairway. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and have a great evening.